Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to be doing something a little more advanced here. It took me a, a good uh, hour to figure out how to reuse Python and plot something cool for you guys. So if you like this kind of content, make sure to leave a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's go ahead and dive into the analysis of this video. So for Bitcoin, we have this 200 week moving average heat map. Now, what this pretty much represents is the 200 week moving average, historically speaking, has been the bottom for Bitcoin on multiple occasions, right? Even the March capitulation, the candle pretty much came identically down to the 200 week moving average with a wick down to 300 week. But for the most part, this 200 week moving average has been the bottom for any given market cycle. And so what the people here on looking at Bitcoin.com did is they created a moving average heat map. Now what they are actually doing mathematically speaking is looking at the 200 week moving average and how quickly it curves up at some points. So for example, you see that these uh, red peaks, these regions of uh, overvaluation is when the curvature of this 200 week moving average actually starts, you know, getting a little steeper. And anytime you see these, these overvaluation regions, you look down and the 200 week moving average is moving up faster than usual same as here and so what we did is obviously in hex we don't have a 200 week moving average yet because you get that after 200 weeks of data which what is that uh, about four years and hex has only existed for about one and a half years so i thought to myself well to do something analogous let's take a historical region of um a bottom right the historical bottom region what what moving average the question was what moving average on hex represents historical bottom regions and in this case we found that 300 day moving average seems to do a pretty good job um, again if you look at the 200 day it does a decent job but for the most part I, I think it's I think it's a good idea to look at longer term moving averages because obviously we don't have a 200 week yet but because of that let's air on the side of longer term moving averages and again i found that this represented a really really um uh was i found that the 300 day moving average was a really good representation of the bottom over here and we only got data obviously after 300 days so this chart isn't going to look as um as awesome as this as the bitcoin one but it'll still provide some insight i think okay so what we did is we went into our handy dandy uh jupyter notebook here python I haven't used this stuff in years, so it took me a minute uh, to figure it out again. But we pretty much got a, a heat map, a moving average heat map. And so with the Bitcoin moving average heat map, what they do is look at the essentially the monthly change, uh, monthly percent change of the 200 week moving average. So I did some quick math, right? And what, what is a month relative to 200 weeks? It was about 2% or so. And so what is 2% of 300 days? About six, six days or so. And so instead of getting the monthly change of the 200 week moving average, uh, like Bitcoin, we got the weekly change of the 300 day moving average for hex, which again, it's like a shorter term scaled down version of this heat map, but I find that it still provides some insight. And without further ado, let's look at the actual heat map. And it's right here. So the reason, and everything from day zero to day 300 is just purple is because we don't have data for the 300 day moving average until day 300. And so anything before day 300 is kind of a wash here and you can't really get much data. Again, as the years go on, we'll, we'll adjust these models to different moving averages and we'll get more insight. Um, uh, most likely we'll get better insight over time but we still get some pretty interesting insight with this scaled down version of the heat map. And as you can tell here, the November 1st pump was, um, where was that around here or so? And again, you can see the 300 day moving average start curving up a little more. And so that's why we see, or more than usual than the rest of these slopes. And that's when you see this, um, this red region. Okay. And so, bottom ring regions in general ever since november 1st have been in the darker blue so the darker blue it gets the kind of better time it is to buy as we saw over here as well it actually got a darker blue interestingly enough 
uh, than, than this region, even though we were at a higher price. And that's because the moving average was flatter than it was um, over here. So I find this really interesting, especially the fact that we see that our recent high didn't even get as overheated as November 1st. Again, even though it's we're at higher prices, uh, this heat map sort of scales relative to to this longer term moving average. So you can see, you know, kind of how actually how overheated are you? Um, so I, again, I found this really, really interesting. We have this um, this peak region and, and we'll follow. We'll keep following this uh, this moving average over time. Right now, we're currently at around the this is V1, so it's going to be slightly off. We're currently around the 1.5 to 1.8 region. Let's actually take a look at V2 because that's where we have our actual liquidity and actual volume and trades going on. Okay, uh, 167. Okay, so where we are now around the 167 region, as you can see, is not that overheated. We're kind of at this lime cyan uh, light blue color, which we saw we've been there a few times like over here we ran up to get overvalued we were in that region around over here right about to reach another great accumulation zone um, we did peak out around here around that level over here but then we got a little orange as you can see we're starting to get a little a little heated and we didn't do that over here recently um, yeah so just let this sink in for a bit and notice and realize that hey we're, we're not as overheated now or even in the recent peak as we were back in November 1st. So do we still have room to move up? Technically, yes, we do. And again, I, I find it bullish. Like so, some people were commenting on the last on the last um, video saying, oh, we're, we're, uh, we dipped down to 0.015, has your opinion changed? And I, ha I, I had to comment, like, did you even watch the video? Because I clearly said in like the past two, three videos, I've said a few times already that as long as we can maintain and hold this 0.015 region and I even said there's some discretion in how you uh, draw the the support resistance region of this macro ascending triangle I even said even 137 right not a big deal as long as we can hold this 137 uh, 1 1.5 penny region I still remain bullish in the long term and in the short term so nothing has changed right we can't forget that we formed an all-time high like two weeks ago guys chill um, Again, if we dip beneath the 137, 149 decisively, not just a wick, if we start closing full ass candles beneath that region, well then okay, let's let's uh, you know, let's adjust our 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 perspective, let's adjust our analysis, and let's say maybe we are in a in a new bear sub cycle. But for now, I don't think we are in one yet. I'll happily change my mind. I, I have no clue what's gonna happen, okay guys? So again. This isn't financial advice. I have no clue what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. And so that's just your generic disclaimer for this video. But with that kind of rant out of the way, my opinion hasn't changed. And looking at this new model, I do think that we still have room to move up, especially because we're holding support on previous resistance regions, which is just your basic, fundamental, most, most simple technical analysis you could possibly have. Just delete all of your indicators right no need to get fancy just support and resistance and it's looking good that's all i can say but i find this chart very very fascinating i find it beautiful um i wish we had more data so we could you know um we could use longer term moving averages but for now we'll, we'll have to do with a 300 day and the percent weekly change um i, I might in the future also do a, a 200 day moving average heat map so we start getting data around here or so I don't know there, there are a bunch of ways you can do this um, but yeah I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments what do you think of this heat map do you think it makes sense to take a scaled down version of the Bitcoin version of this and apply it to hex I thought it was a cool idea I think it looks tight um, yeah and also if you guys aren't following on Twitter you guys have recently been blowing my Twitter up so thank you so much for that I think this is the most engagement I've ever gotten on a piece of content. So again, appreciate it. Shout out to Hexo for, for shouting me out on his live stream. I really do appreciate that. And we, we're, get, we're getting all the OG Hexkins starting to follow like uh, Crypto Coffee. I think Yash Deep Hexo followed me recently. Let's actually go check. Uh, A-Bit Hex. 
Oh, he's not following yet. Anyways, you guys, I appreciate the uh, the support. Uh, this is an awesome community. I couldn't be happier. And yeah, with that said, go ahead and follow on Twitter if you're not already. Uh, appreciate your watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.